This video is about the Behringer Dual Oscillator Module 112, which is part of the System 100 series. This module features two independent voltage controllable oscillators, one to the left and one to the right. There is no internal connection between these two VCOs, so they are completely standalone, except for that they share the same power supply and obviously the same front plate. This module is one of four dual modules, um, the others are the VCF, the VCA and the envelope, um, so with these four we immediately have a duophonic synthesizer. So let's talk about the left VCO here and keep in mind that the right one is completely identical. Here we have the two VCO outputs, both are internally connected so they output exactly the same signals. We cannot get more than one waveform out of this VCO at the same time except for a little trick that I show in a few moments. This switch here lets us choose between the different waveforms and we can select between a triangle wave, a sawtooth wave and a square wave with adjustable pulse width. This control here is the manual pulse width control and it spans from 50%, so an even square wave, up to a narrow pulse. Here we have the pulse width CV control and um, we feed the signal into here and have an attenuator here to uh, control the amount of pulse width modulation. And the result goes on top of the manual pulse width control. Let's have a quick look at the different waveforms. This is the triangle wave, quite precise. Triangle waves, like all other waveforms, consist of a fundamental frequency here at 100 Hz and then triangle waves have a few higher harmonics and um, they are located at the odd integer multiples of the fundamental frequency. So here we see another peak at 300 Hz and another very small one at 500 Hz. And this actually goes on for higher frequencies. But uh, the power of these higher harmonics uh, decreases quite significantly for higher frequencies. So um, triangle waves are actually close to uh, sine waves um, and sine waves only have a fundamental frequency and no higher harmonics. This is the sawtooth wave. Again, this looks quite precise. Sawtooth waves have um, all integer multiples of their fundamental frequency as higher harmonics. So here we see peaks at uh, 100 Hz, which is the fundamental frequency, and then also at 200, 300, and so on. And again, the power of these higher harmonics decreases um, with higher frequencies, but not as fast as with the triangle wave. Due to this high amount of uh, higher harmonics, sawtooth waves are typically um, known as uh, the best waveforms for subtractive synthesis, so when we use a filter to remove a certain amount of, uh, of these higher harmonics, then it's obviously good if um, the basic waveform has a lot of high harmonics, so that we have a lot of them to filter out. This is the square wave with 50% pulse width also looking good and um, we see that it again only has odd integer multiples of the fundamental frequency but um, the power of these higher harmonics doesn't decrease as fast as with the triangle wave. These even square waves uh, sound quite hollow but when we tune them to a narrower pulse width then we see that more harmonics appear and also the sound changes to a more natural character. Back to the VCO itself. Um, further down here we have the octave switch, which spans 5 octaves from 32 foot up to 2 foot. 
and below we have the manual pitch control. In the 32 foot range with the pitch control set to 12 o'clock, which is labeled 0 here, the output frequency is a C0 with a frequency of just a bit more than 16 Hz. And then we can switch to C1, C2, C3 and C4, which then has a frequency of 261 Hz. And with the manual pitch control we can go up to about 600 Hz. And with the CV control we can actually go much higher than that, even um, quite outside the audio range. This brings us to the pitch CV control. We have these three inputs here, um, which are internally summed together. All have their own attenuator, all are exponential and track one volt per octave with the attenuator in the fully clockwise position. Then we have the oscillator sync with the sync input here, which um, typically comes from another VCO, for example, and the sync output here that we can use to sync another VCO to this one. And then we have a switch to select between weak and strong sync, and this determines how the sync input signal is processed. This uh, strong sync setting is probably more known as hard sync, which means that the oscillator resets with every rising edge in the incoming sync signal. In strong sync mode, it will only snap to the fundamental frequency of this uh, sync input signal or to higher harmonics, but never to lower frequencies. We now see the green trying away from the left VCO here and the red signal is the sync output from the right VCO. And when we increase the pitch of this right VCO, it just cuts into the triangle wave of um, the left VCO and resets it. So there is no way for the left VCO to go below the frequency of the right VCO. When we tune the left VCO to higher pitches, it will produce higher harmonic frequencies to the fundamental frequency of the right VCO. Then we have the weak sync setting, which is basically a weaker version of the hard sync, which means it can also uh, lock to other musical intervals and not only to higher harmonics of the sync input signal. The original Roland manual is a bit more helpful here than the Beringer Quick Start Guide and tells us a bit more about these sync modes. The oscillator sync works with different waveforms and we don't have to take this sync output um, to sync these oscillators. It also works with a triangle wave or a uh, sawtooth wave. However, this sync out allows us to get two different waveforms out of this oscillator at the same time because it turns out that the sync output is just the square wave. No matter what we select with this waveform uh, switch, um, the sync out outputs the square wave and it even includes the pulse width modulation. So if we take this sync output and the normal VCO output and uh, feed them both into a mixer, we are ready to create more complex waveforms with this oscillator. The layout of this module is copied from the original and it's actually really nice. 
all audio inputs and outputs are at the top and all control CV inputs are at the bottom. And this uh, scheme also holds for most of the other System 100 modules, which makes patching very fluent. Also great is that all the audio and CV inputs have their own attenuator um, and actually these modules have audio and CV mixers integrated here. So we don't have to patch in an extra mixer module. And again, this makes the workflow very efficient. The overall quality of these modules is good and uh, these trimmer pots actually feel extremely sturdy and heavy. One little issue here is the spacing between the octave selector and the pitch tune knob, which is a bit small and um, you often accidentally detune the module when you switch through the octaves. If you compare this VCO to other Eurorack um, VCOs, you will uh, notice that they often have the same set of features. The Dupfer Basic VCO, for example, shares exactly the same functionality, and many other VCOs also have a comparable set of features. But in contrast to most of these, we have a dual oscillator here, which is a great feature, and it gives us a pretty solid analog sound.
thanks for watching and stay tuned.